Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. Man, I got you another video. And uh, this video, I want to talk about James Prochet. He did an interview with the Lounge Podcast. That's with uh, Ryan Mink and Gary Downing. Uh, they both work for the Baltimore Ravens, as you guys probably already know. But, um, but yeah, I want to talk about the interview, man. I thought it was very really interesting and some things that stood out to me. But before we get into that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for everybody that has been doing that. I greatly appreciate y'all. So let's get into the interview with James Prochet, right? All right, so as we know as Ravens fans, the wide receiver core has been a question since, I don't know, the Ravens have existed pretty much, right? Uh, it's always been doubts about, is this, do we have enough talent? Do we have enough explosion? This and that. I think last year was actually the first time where the fans could actually feel some relief a little bit that we had the guys in the building that were at least talented enough. We just need the production to show on the field. But with the Hollywood trade, that's kind of flipped up again. And now we kind of feel like we're in that spot again where, do we have enough? And James Prochet is one of those guys that's firmly in the mix of, do we have enough talent um, on this team? Uh, do we need to add a veteran? But uh, anyway, so with James Prochet, he, uh, he's like, like I say, he sat down with the guys at the lounge. And uh, he gave his thoughts about, you know, just his career so far and the opportunities this season. So the first thing he said was that this season is a blank slate and the opportunities are immense for the, for the wide receiving court. And that's true. There's nobody in front of them right now. It's Bateman, DuVernay, Prochet, Tylen Wallace. It's all up to them. It's all up for grass for them, for those guys to really snatch the opportunity. And he said he's working to earn respect every day he works on. He uh, walks onto the field. Um, so one thing you will hear about with Prochet is that he's determined and that he's a really, like, solid person. You know what I mean? Like, when I say that, I mean he's, like, he's, he's principled in how he acts. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And he's going to work his ass off until he gets to that point. Um, I went to the Ravens training cap practices last year. That stuff about him being the first guy on the field, last one off, is true. When he's the first person on the field, he's literally by himself. Maybe a couple of the assistants are out there, and he's working on a juggling machine. So if he feels like he's going to make an impact on his team, he's going to work to get to that point. So I always like James Poche, and um, I feel as though that if given opportunities, he can help the Ravens. Uh, what else did he say? He said that he hears the criticism. And you can see that on his Twitter. Sometimes he'll respond to it in a kind of non-direct way that he hears it. But I view this as a good or a bad thing. right? It could be a good thing in the sense that he uses that uh, criticism and turns it into motivation. right? And, and it drives him to work hard and become a better player. Now, on the reverse side of it, it could be bad. You don't want to have too much outside noise and now it's clouding on what you think of and how you view yourself. So if he can find the right balance, which I think he can, because like I said, he's a highly motivated individual within himself. He doesn't need outside noise to help. Then that, that can be a good thing that he uses that. And he says the whole wide receiver room wants to quiet the noise from the outside. So they, they want to say, they want to show and prove that, hey, look, you guys are talking about do the Ravens have enough talent. We're going to show you that we got enough talent at the, in this wide receiver court to be competitive. Um, ultra competitive. He said he brings like a game-like mentality to every practice, and that's evident. He's always competing. He said whether it's in the locker room or on the field, he always wants to win, flat out. And I, I, I can believe that just hearing him talk. I can believe that. Uh, also, to me, the most compa uh, most interesting thing he said, excuse me, about his on-the-field play was that he was really – uh, his best games really came as an outside receiver or an X receiver. And I agree with that. I think that he gets uh, shoved into the slot receiver role because he's 5'11", 5'10", 5 5 5 and he's 190 or maybe close to 200 pounds. So people view him as a smaller guy who's a lot of a slot. But in my opinion, you got Bateman on one side. I think DuVernay holds down the slot. And then that, that number two outside receiver is still up for grabs. And I think it's between him and Tyler Wallace at the moment. Now, the Ravens bringing in a vet, obviously, all that changes. But this idea that James Boucher is just another guy for the slot just because he's a little smaller, I, I don't believe in that. I think he really is an outside receiver. And if the Ravens want to get the best out of him, that might be where he's best at. Now, obviously, you want to have receivers that move around and they can play multiple positions and are not stagnant. So you, you don't want that. And he said that his, his favorite wide receiver position is just being on the field. So um, he's not too concerned about it, but he did say he can't play outside. And um, also he said that Gene drafted by the Ravens allowed him to expand his game because he came from a spread offense at SMU. And he, obviously the Ravens aren't in that kind of offense right now. 
And he said being on this kind of team allowed him to adapt his game and do more than he was doing at SMU as far as uh, being more ro- a well-rounded player. If he would have went to the same kind of team, he said he might not have evolved and expanded his game as a player. Which, uh, you could, I mean, maybe take it with a grain of salt because, you know, he's on the Ravens, so he has to say these kind of things. But I think he's telling the truth. I think he really believes that being here was something to expand his game and change the way he plays and makes him a, a different kind of player. I truly believe that. Um, he views that year three was going to be the year that he got his chance to potentially break out because he knew that being a late-round pick, the opportunities were going to be um, a little slimmer than for him than for other people. So he said that year one, I'm just going to put my head down. I'm just going to learn. Year two, that's when I'm really focused on uh, expanding my game even more and still you know, taking it day by day. But year three is a chance where I get to show and prove on the field whether or not I belong in the NFL. And I think he's going to get that chance to show and prove this year. I really do. Um, they asked him about the Hollywood trade. Now, every wide receiver that does an interview, does a press conference, is going to be asked about this Hollywood trade because it was a big deal. And he said that with the Hollywood trade, it didn't change anything for him. He said that, you know, Hollywood, kind of like Rashad Bateman, like uh, me and Hollywood are friends. You know, it's my brother. We're good. But my plan this year was to step on the field and be the man anyway. So I thought that was I thought that was good to hear. A lot of these wide receivers are showing like an unwavering confidence in themselves. And that's what you need because you're playing a position where you're modeling, modeling with a DB most of the game. And you got to show that you're better than him. So you got to have that self-confidence. And uh, Bateman, Proche, guys like that, they don't like that kind of confidence. So that's good to hear. Uh, he talked about um, him and Devin Duvernay and their relationship. That they push each other constantly on, on the field. Um, that they're guys that are ultra competitive with each other. That they make each other better just because they want to beat one another as far as you know, who had the better day, who had the better reps. So I thought that was good to hear because I believe in Devin Duvernay as well. That with the chances and the opportunities, he can make plays for this team. So that was cool. Um, and then on his personal life, the reason he was pushing so hard to win number three is because um, him and his brothers, they all wore three at some point. So when he was in college, he said his younger brother was at Juco. And then the baby brother, he was in high school. And they all wore number three. They even got like a, a company called like Channel 3 Productions. You can see it on his uh, his Twitter page a lot. And so I thought it was cool. You know, so three is like a... Um, a bond with his family. So that's why it meant, it meant a lot to him to wear that number. Uh, let's see. He also said that, you know, point for him is staying humble, working hard, and uh, evolving, evolving his game, getting better every year at his craft. Uh, he also mentioned that, you know, he worked out with Lamar Jackson this offseason. And you can see that if you watch, you know, the Twitter videos, IG videos of Lamar posted that James Boucher was there. Uh, but he said that Lamar Jackson is locked in this year. He's ready to win a bowl this year. Um, which is good, uh, you know, because you don't want to hear fans question whether or not a guy wants to be here, whether he wants to work just because he's not here at OTAs. So Proche put that noise down and said, look, Lamar's locked in. He's ready to win that bowl and uh, change his number to number one because if you know that, you know, Lamar Jackson said that if he was a Super Bowl, he'll change number number one in the following season. So we'll see. Hopefully he gets that chance to do that if he wants to. Um, he also said that him and Lamar have become closer over the years now. Um, especially going in from from uh, from last season to this season, that you know their lockers are close to each, closer to each other, and that they've had a more close knit relationship since then. Um, and he also said that Lamar Jackson is one of the most down to earth people he's he's met. That he could act like a superstar QB, but he doesn't do that. He's humble. He talks to everybody the same way. So that's pretty much the gist of the James Proche interview. And I just thought it was interesting to hear him speak because I never really listened to an interview with him. But you could tell that he's an extremely principled. He kind of lives by a cold, and that cold is hard work. It's going to get you to where you need to be. Um, so I have a lot of faith in James Poche. Listen to the interview. I like it even more. I think that he's going to give the Ravens everything he has. And if it's not enough, it's not going to be because he didn't try. It's just going to be because maybe you know the talent is not what we thought it would be or could be. But I think he has the ability and the potential to be a solid if he could be a solid wide receiver three and potentially go up to wide receiver two in terms of production, then the Ravens have really, you know, got a steal. But if he could be just a key contributor on this team, get four or five hundred yards, that's gonna be a good season. That's gonna be a really good season for James Prochet. Um, but yeah, y'all check out the interview on the Lounge Podcast. I listen to it on Spotify. 
Uh, I'm sure it's on all streaming platforms. But uh, Ryan Mink, Gary Down, they do a really good job interviewing these players. And uh, they also have, you know, all the ideas as well. So it's a good listen. But anyway, uh, it's your boy Gabriel. There's another fan TV. I'm out.